my name is Dr. May and I want to welcome you to our geometry terms lesson. So in this lesson, I'm going to be going over undefined terms in geometry. How do we say it? What do we write? Those kinds of things. So there's going to help you and set you up for success in our geometry course. I'll also be showing you just kind of some physical representations of what do those things look like in the real world. So let's take a look. So the first one that I want to talk about is just a point. And you may be saying to yourself, well, Dr. May, I know what that is. And you're right. You probably do. This one's just a basic term in geometry. It's a point. It doesn't have any size. So no matter if you draw your dot really big or really tiny, it's still just a point. Now, I'm going to be throughout our lesson using good old Play-Doh <laughs> to show some of these things too. And I'll be switching to my document camera so you can see what we are talking about for the point. So let's take a look. So if I were going to use my Play-Doh like we talked about as our point, then I would just, you know, make a little ball here and I'd have a point. Now, if I call that A, that is point A. Now, as we get ready to go into our next term, I want you to think about what if I put these points side by side, just in a row. And remember, points do not have any size to them. So, you know, whether I make my Play-Doh large or small doesn't matter. But the idea is what if I strung these points just side by side all the way infinite in, well, let's put one over here, both directions. What if I put those points going in both directions? Then we talk about our next term. So if we string those points together infinitely in two directions, we get a line. Now, in geometry, a line by definition is straight. So even though maybe when we're talking about drawing and maybe an art setting, we would talk about lines that might curve. In geometry, lines must be straight. It doesn't have any thickness and it goes definitely in both directions. Now, look at the example that I have here. I want you to see that our line is drawn past the point A and the point B that are labeled on this line. Notice that we do put arrows in both directions. I'm making a really big deal about these things because those pieces are going to set this line apart from some of the other geometry terms we're going to talk about. Now, look at how we name them if we're writing them. We would say then line AB, or we could say line BA. They mean the same thing. Notice the notation, though. If I want to put AB, I have to put the little line symbol above it with arrows on both ends. Or, of course, I could put line BA and put the arrows on both ends as well. Again, I'm making a really big deal about details here because it's going to set it apart. So let's take a look at how we might represent the line in another setting. So if we take a look at how we do a line with Play-Doh, you may have, as a little kid, played around with just making like a snake, right? So if I wanted to take my Play-Doh and make it into a line, now of course, we have to remember lines go infinitely in both directions, but I could have something that would look, you know, very similar to that. Now, let's talk about a little bit about what if I had a point on this line, and just because I don't want to mesh the Play-Doh, I'm just going to set my point on top there. And let's say I had another point for this line. I might set it like that. And maybe just one more, something like this. These three points would be called co linear co because they are together on a line so again these three points would be called co linear let's look at how we might put some notation to that so you can see the lines here in the diagram you have point a b and c are all on this line now i want to point out you could call this line line a b or you could call it line a c or you could call it line CB. You have lots of options to name this line. However, points A, B, and C are called collinear because they all are on the same line. 
All right, I'm jumping around here because I wanna give plenty of room for all of the notation. If we move away from a line, you'll notice the diagram here, we have end points. We do not have arrows going up past these points. And that is because this is called a line segment. It's part of a line and we can find the distance between these two points. We'll do that in a variety of ways throughout our course. Now let's look at how you might call this. You could say line segment AB, you could say segment AB, or you could flip the order, do line segment BA. The order there does not matter, but I want to point out the notation piece. Look at how we write AB, segment AB. We put the little line symbol above it, but we do not put the arrows on the end. That's important because look, just looking at the notation, you're gonna be able to tell, is this a line or is this a line segment? Now, I referenced that point at the end of a segment as an end point, but let's get official here. An end point is a point at the end of a segment or a ray, which we're gonna talk about rays here in just a moment. Point A here is an end point because the line does not extend past point A, and so that is why it is called an end point. Our next term we're gonna look at is the midpoint. Now the midpoint, you might, a little intuitive there what that means, the midpoint is halfway between two end points. So if I look at my diagram here, we would say point M is the midpoint of line segment a, B. M is the midpoint, and you could write A, B as a segment with the segment notation above it. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of terminology at you that maybe you've heard these words before, but I want to impress upon you the meaning of these words in geometry. That's what these words mean, and that we're going to apply them in a lot of different scenarios. Bisects. Now, bisects might be a word that you've heard before, it literally means to divide into two equal parts. Look at the terminology though under the naming section. Line CD bisects line segment AB. Look at all the notation I pulled together there in that statement. So let me see it again. Line CD. How do I know it's a line? It's got arrows on both ends. Okay. Bisects, which means it cuts in half line segment AB. So line segment AB had those endpoints on the end, but now CD, line CD is cutting it in half. I want you to notice these little hash marks that we have. The little hash marks are indicating that those two segments are congruent. They are equal in length. So again, pulling all of this terminology together, so that the language of geometry is something that we're understanding a little bit better. Segment addition is a theorem that we will be using, and I use the word theorem just meaning as it's a rule, okay? So notice that points A, B, and C are all on the same line. Remember we called those collinear because they're all on the same line. I want you to see that line segment A, B, goes together with line segment BC to give us the whole length of line segment AC. Now, I want to show you with my Play-Doh just kind of visually how this comes apart. All right, I want you to look at the whole segment as the pink here, but I want you to look at, I broke it up into a blue or turquoise segment and a white segment, okay? So what segment addition says is if you take this section of the blue and you add it together with the white, you get the pink. And I know the notation can be confusing and it looks scary, but really that's what it's saying. Let's take a look at maybe putting some numbers to it and you'll see what I mean by it. Well, let's say that the whole segment, well, let's call this A, B, and C. So if I'm told that AB is eight, okay, so line segment AB is eight, so from here to here is eight, the blue section is eight, and from B to C is two, 
Could you tell me what the length of the pink one is? Well, sure, you would just add the blue and the white because that's the equal to the length. That would give you 10. You have just done segment addition there, right? You've taken the pieces that add up to the whole to find out how long the whole is. Well, let's take a look at some more terms then. All right, our next term is called a plane. Yes, it is spelled the same way as a plane like you would fly in, but this one in our geometry context means that it's a plane has length and width, but no thickness. So I like to tell students to think of this as the floor in your home. It goes on, and but make sure it goes on forever in all directions. It's just completely flat, but it keeps going in, in these two dimensions, and it is a plane. Now, notice the way we name it. We say plane, and if we write a symbol, we can give it a name. We could say plane P. Or we could name it by three points. Remember, our line had to have two points that we named it by. For plane, you have to have three. So you could say plane ABC, or plane BAC, or plane CBA. You get the idea. But remember, the plane is like the floor. It goes infinitely in these directions, but it doesn't have any thickness. Coplanar is our next term, and I, I want you to think back. Collinear meant three points on the same line. Collinear points. Coplanar are points on the same plane. So in our diagram here, at points A, B, and C are all coplanar. So that word co means they're together, and then whatever the next term. Really think about breaking those words apart to help you understand them. Our last term today is a ray. Now, a ray is a part of a line that has a starting point or an end point and goes infinitely in one direction. So look at our diagram here. You can see the end point is A, and then the ray goes on infinitely past point B with an arrow on the end if we're drawing a diagram. I also want to draw your attention to the way we name this. We would say it ray A, B. And it's important that you use that order only. The reason it's important with the ray is that it, because you have an endpoint now, you must name that first, ray A, B. Also, look at the notation. When I write A, B and I put the symbol above it, because A is the endpoint and B is the direction where the arrow is, you have to put the arrow above the B. So if you do ray B, A, that's not this ray you see on my diagram, okay? It's very important that you notice the distinction of those. So friends, thank you so much for the lesson. If you've made it this far, go ahead and comment the star emoji below. Also, you great if you added these to your notes section, maybe some index cards as you're getting ready and getting started into your geometry course. And uh, thanks for tagging along, and I hope you have a great one. Bye for now.